listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's America's Got Talent After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's America's Got Talent After Show. Bing is for doing, and we are here doing the first AfterBuzz TV after show for America's Got Talent. My name is Emil, and I'm going to introduce myself. And or I, did, I'm did, Corey. Wait, did I just introduce myself? Wait. You did. So my name is Emil, and it's Junior. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Corey Take. Sorry, that was a really long episode. We're all a little worn out yeah. after that, but um, it was really good. So. Let's talk about it. We have a lot to talk about. Yeah, um, let's get underway. So we began with Howard Stern, because this is the Howard Stern show now. Right. Okay, season seven of America's Got Talent, and we've got Howard Stern in the mix, which has completely changed the dynamics from great to spectacular, in Seriously, my opinion. Seriously, he was a great addition. And I was telling you before the show that um, Piers Morgan was okay, but I felt he was unintentionally or intentionally mean throughout the whole thing and it was just really unlikable well i mean here's the thing like we have pierce morgan who's a little more straight edge yeah. a little more strict more blunt howard stern is actually more blunt but there's some kind of appeal to him that america loves which is his rash honesty but see with howard stern too he's more blunt but i felt like pierce morgan was trying to be more like the simon cow of the show instead of actually trying to be himself well, you know, Simon Cowell, he's actually, you know, the, one of the executive producers yeah. of this show. Yeah. Um, so having a, no Simon Cowell figure on the show is going to definitely have an extremely awesome mix. On yeah. This. I'm really excited to be on this show on After Buzz TV. Oh, God. So we started with basically we had Nick Cannon on the mountaintop, <laughs> whatever that thing was, the canyons. Yeah. And then we have a montage of Howard Stern. And we saw Maria Menounos in there for a second. Yeah, for a second. Um. And then we went to Howard Stern saying, what is that clever line he said? He said, I'm the only American on the panel anyway in that little montage. He said that. Well, I wouldn't say it was a little montage. It was <laughs> it was a good solid 10 minutes long of the intro to Howard Stern on America's Got Seriously. Talent. I mean, but it's important, too, because, you know, so many people are watching. We have a lot of new fans who are coming to America's Got mm -hmm. Talent solely Absolutely. because of him. And even still, I watch America's Got Talent. But, you know, it drags on for so long sometimes that sometimes it seems like it's not fresh anymore. And yeah. it was nice to bring in this new judge who's really fresh and caused so much controversy. It I, makes I would, you want to watch. I would definitely agree. I mean, it is one of those shows. For me, I don't really want to see America's Got Talent. Right. Not that interesting. But Howard Stern, he could put a spin on, on pretty much anything. I, Whether that's brutal honesty, which is what you guys said Pierce Morgan mm -hmm. was maybe trying to do. With Howard, it is just whatever the situation he's viewing He's such a great communicator that he'll make it either funny, rude, happy, sad. You know, he's got he's got that range. So I am one of those new America's Got Talent people. I haven't watched all six seasons, but I definitely would want to see what he has to say. I, you mean, know? I mean, Ronnie, let me tell you, like with the other seasons, sometimes two hours is uh, a long time that, you know, I would just go out and cook dinner while I'm watching the show. But here, this time, I, I really couldn't take my, my eyes off the TV. It was actually interesting in the fact that it was great feedback from the judges this time. It wasn't like just boring. So yeah, I mean, speaking of that, the judges, I think all three of them have a really good dynamic. They have great chemistry, mm -hmm. and 
you know, I know a lot of time for ratings, they try to have like the judges fight and stuff, but you don't want to see them fight. They just had like a really nice chemistry because right. they all balance each other out in their now, own little way. If you guys could just catch me up because sure. I am one of the new America's Got Talent, you know, fans because of Howard. Who are the casualties, uh, you know, the people that have come and gone off this show? Because it's been Hasselhoff's not on there no more. I mean, these are no, things he's, that he's okay. Not about who, who who have we seen and who has been you know let uh, go or whatever? Well, there was a uh, Brandy for one season. Oh yeah, Moesha, <laughs> Moesha. Chardonnay on the game. <laughs> Chardonnay, I forgot about her too. It's been yeah. so many. And I think I think Sharon's been on pretty much yeah. for the rest of the time. And what about now? Nick Cannon was he the original host or was no. it Jerry Springer? We had or? Jerry Springer and Regis Philbin as well. But I like Nick Cannon way more. Oh, Nick Cannon is great. He's so much he fun. He is great. And he he's a happily married man. Yeah. And I think Mariah Carey brings out the best in him. The the thing about Nick, which is interesting, he had some uh, you know, health problems or whatever. He I had know. a, yeah, he a radio program that he was doing and he dropped that, you know, to focus on certain things. So it's cool that he sticks with this. This is obviously his bread and butter, yeah. you know, yeah. as far as what people want to see him. He is the perfect well rounded host, I think. He yeah. is, he is, you know. Uh, when he first started off, it was kind of questionable. Like, Nick Cannon? Why Nick Cannon on America's Got Talent? We had Jerry Springer, Regis Philbin. These people are high class, you know, talk show hosts. And then we got Nick Cannon, who wasn't as experienced. But bam, he did a really well, I mean, good I job. Think and now he's great. A lot of people were nervous, too, because I know me personally. I remember him from Nickelodeon as a child. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, he went to that MTV gig. What was uh, um Wild and Out? Wild and Out. And so if you see him on Wild and Out, he produced that yeah. talent then it's like a complete different well, person the I, thing with nick which i really enjoy i'm sorry to cut, oh, cut you go, go for it go uh, for it what i like about him is yes we did see him as a teenager all that those days or whatever nickelodeon and then we saw him evolve try to do the rap thing didn't really work for him i liked Married his rap mariah song. uh good good okay <laughs> you know he, he had the movie with christina million one thing i always oh, appreciate that's one of my favorite movies i'm sorry go ahead <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was on tv the other day i mean what i appreciate about it, this entertainer nick i know he is a little bit cheese ball corn but he, he evolves he tries different things and I think that's good and that's why the you know mm -hmm. the show is called America's Got Talent not yeah. the coolest host in the world you True. know has talent or whatever right. clearly I'm corny too <laughs> well let's dive right in let's act go. number one Aoni Jackson the magician or so we thought okay that was a little weird Aoni Jackson 34 year old guy um, who said he was a magician but suddenly he became a stripper it was okay so he asked howie for the ring and then he gets the ring from howie but i still the ring ended up on the nipple i still don't understand how that happened it ended, ended up that's why he's a magician slash stripper and there was like some reno 911 action yes, going on yes. it was the strangest act ever i mean what a way to start a season and then howard stern <laughs> said he said as a stripper you can't have man boobs yeah and then he said he has man boobs <laughs> And he did mention that his package was, was small. small. Yeah. I mean, for all the women out there. There is a market for everything, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but that's what I like about this show, because you never know what to expect. And I think that's what keeps America coming back. You never know what to expect. You really never know what to expect. Like act number two, the bird lady, Miss Les. Who was oh, beyond dear. creepy. Oh, dear. Beyond creepy. And I think what creeped me out the most, not the fact that she lets the birds eat out of her mouth. But when she said that the birds actually defecate on her. And that's what the patterns are for. Exactly. So I was like, oh, God. I, I mean, I wonder if I think there's a selection process to get on the stage for the three judges. Yeah. So I really wonder why they put her on, because it was borderline disgusting for me to watch. But I guess that's what people want to see. They want to see disgusting stuff they can talk about, like tomorrow at work. Oh, did you see the bird lady? Because, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to bring that up tomorrow. Yeah, seriously. Work. <laughs> How bad she probably smells. Um, but the funny thing was, she actually had a nice voice. I mean, you and I agreed, right? It was, it was nice. A, it was a loungy voice. Loungy voice. How far can you go with that? Right. I mean, it was nice. Like, she can sing better than I can, for sure. But I wasn't that impressed with her singing. And her birds were probably more impressive than yeah. her singing. The birds are really distracting. Actuality. Yeah, they were distracting. There's, there, there's nothing that really came out of her voice that attracted people the way the birds were because they were so distracting. But you know what I think we have to think about too is for some people, I don't even think it's about them getting to Vegas. I think they just want to expose their talent. Mm -hmm. So for true. her, it might have been, okay, I can sing, but nobody's going to actually let me get to the judges. So if I have these birds, then I have my opportunity to get in front of America. So, But she could have done it in a better way. I mean, yeah. her birds could have been hanging out in bird cages yeah. and she couldn't care in them or something. But this was just... 
A little strange, let me tell you that. <laughs> and it gets stranger because the next act was that guitar player with the little puppet things in the background, which I still don't know what they were. Remember the he was playing the guitar and then he had like these weird puppet I don't even know what to describe. I don't even know what you're talking about right now. <laughs> it was literally on for like ten seconds or so where he had the what do you call those things? It was like the paper mache heads. And then he had like a swirly thing oh, in the background. Yes, uh, yes. That that was actually what I remember then was that Howard Stern said something about him. Yeah. And then he said that would hurt my opinion if I cared. Right. What you what you thought. Right. And that was pretty awesome. Yeah. That was really funny. And that then there was a start of the slew of all the bad acts and stuff. So um, I like that sexy man sax, sexy sax man. Yes. That was so well, funny. But what's funny about Howard is, which we see throughout the show, is that he actually interacts with the people competing. And he got on stage and started gyrating with the sexy sax man. Yes. So it's nice to see a judge that actually interacts. Because Nick Cannon has always interacted with mm -hmm. the guests. Obviously, he is on stage with them already. But to see a judge literally get up and start interacting with them, it, Shows like a nice personable side. Well, yeah, it's a again, it's a big change yeah. because Howie Mandel. Well, he was the first one to get up today, but he was very hesitant. Yeah. He has that germaphobic mm -hmm. thing going on. But you know, Howard Stern again, really good per person, good great Here's judgment. Real, just as you talked about Howie Mandel, I cannot not say this. I think it's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm a germaphobe. He said not me, but he says he's a germaphobe. He won't shake anyone's hand. Yeah. The question that I I always have is was he not shaking people's hands when he was broke and he wasn't able to get a deal mm. i mean i'm not gonna shake people's hands damn it you're gonna shake people's hands when you're trying to get a job come on howie just because you got your own tv show now or whatnot don't act like that but that's but, a good that's, that's a good point but I, you know sorry <laughs> I, I think howie should come to after buzz tv and Seriously. tell us why he won't touch on oh i don't i'm not gonna shake his hand no I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> i would shake his hand he was cool when i was a kid bobby's world was pretty fun um, and there was another show when he had that like, curly, curly hair. Anyway. I don't remember any of these shows. Am I too old for you? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> where do I remember Howie from? I don't even... Whoa, oh, Deal or No Deal. That's where I first met Oh, Howie. Deal or No... Wow. Yeah. Youngin. I'm a youngin. <laughs> okay, but what about the girl who was singing and then Howard tells her to marry a rich guy? And that's when we saw Ozzy uh, Osbourne. That was pretty cool. That was when we saw Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, that was that cool. That was pretty cool. It was a nice little cameo. Yeah. Yeah. Is he there every week, do you think? I don't know. I mean, he I was, didn't see him in St. Louis. I mean, obviously, they're not going to show him every five seconds, but that's right. These were the auditions in yeah. Los Angeles. Um, I, I, I mean, for him to travel all around with Sharon Osbourne, I think that's something that would be out of his, you know, time. He yeah. seems like a busy man, but yeah. who knows? Maybe he will make a lot more cameos on America's Got Talent. It's cool to see him. Yeah. But then I think what we were most, I think this still may be in the top two for me, William Close. The uh, Earth Harp guy. Oh. It was amazing. That was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Yes. And I don't think, did you catch what he was, when he was setting up, I don't think we fully understood what he was about to do. Well, no. I mean, they, they set it up to something like, this is ridiculous. Right. You know, 42-year-old man named William Close, he has a five-month pregnant wife, and we're like, okay, sob story. Yeah. And he has this ridiculous amount of string, 3,000 feet long. Well, even when he said 3,000 feet, I don't think I even in my mind could think how long that actually was. Right. And then you're like, what? what is he going to do with 3,000 feet of string? You know? And it was amazing. It was. I love strings. You know, violin, cellos. And the way that came off, I would have, you know, put on rewind over and over again but just for a little snippet. I think the thing that really intrigued me is I thought about while I was watching it, if I was watching it live. Cause you, could you imagine yeah. being in the theater yeah. and having like the sound throughout the theater like right under mm -hmm. you? Because it went literally to the balcony. Mm -hmm. So it's so cool. Yeah, because when I watch America's Got Talent and I think of the shows that would be good, I think of, would I want to watch this? Would I pay to watch this in Las Vegas? Yeah. And that I really think I would have paid to watch something I've like never that. seen anything like that before. Mm -hmm. And then the fact he actually builds the instruments himself. Mm -hmm. He builds them himself. So I, I, I have high hopes for him. I think he's going to make it pretty far. Yeah. I mean, I guess one thing you have to think about, too, even though it is amazing, do you think that can go far, though? I mean... Well, sure, because there's a lot of different sounds he can make with those yeah. strings. There's a lot of different songs. And his drummer was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's not just strings. He's got, like, you know, backup instruments with I him. I think what would be really cool is if he had dancers with him, too, to, like, really push the performance even further you know i the further he goes I, they're probably going to endorse him more and more and they're he's probably going to have 
more of that glamour and the glitz, and it's only going to get better. So I really I think can't wait to see that he's going to go far. Yeah, you know. Um. So I noticed though more than any other season that this season had quite a bit of commercial ads. Yeah. Like product placement, a lot of Snapple. Lots know. of Snapple. <laughs> Lots of Snapple, Spider-Man. What else did we see? We saw... Orville Redenbacher. Orville Redenbacher. And that was... Uh, and uh, Battleship. Yeah. So because of that, I want to plug Amazon for After Buzz TV. So guys, thank you so much for listening to us. And it would help us tremendously if you would just go onto our website, AfterBuzzTV.com, and then click on the Amazon link. It's very quick, and it just helps us keep our show running for you guys and for all the other AfterBuzzers here. We really appreciate AfterBuzzTV.com, Amazon.com. I mean, just you can purchase basically anything you need there. It's awesome. Seriously, it awesome. is extremely easy. After Buzz TV, hit the banner on the top that says Amazon. And think <laughs> of it like this, like the studio, you're watching it on YouTube, you know, you enjoy it or the live stream. I mean, that costs a little bit of cash, so this way you do Amazon affiliate. We get a little bit of money to keep the studio going. Um, our two hosts here today, I mean, they came in not wearing any clothes, and you know, that with the clothes cost <laughs> money too, so just think about it like that. If you don't do the Amazon thing, Kaori's going to be here naked, and I mean, just that might be a whole different type of show. Oh, so. that's a whole different type of show. <laughs> 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 but we do appreciate all our After Buzz Amazon affiliate people. And we love doing the show. Seriously, we do love doing the show. Um, so let's talk next. I have interesting costumes. Oh, this is the Elements dance crew. They were the cloggers. Uh huh. Oh, and the cloggers. Okay. They were really good, though. They were really good. And I, I, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. I was saying I think I was really impressed because for me, as far as dancing goes, I can't dance. Uh -huh. I can stick to the beat, but I really can't dance. I would dance. think you can dance. Yeah, I, I really can. <laughs> um, but I can, <laughs> I can stick to the beat. I can follow the beat if I'm in a club or something, but I really cannot dance. And I'm always in awe when I see really talented dancers, especially when they're young. And the fact that they were so crisp and stayed in sync yeah. for the whole time, they were so in sync. And not in sync, the, the band, though. <laughs> but they are so in sync throughout the whole performance. And I think that shows how much passion and commitment they have to their craft. Yeah, they were probably the best dancers um, of the night yeah. in terms of being in sync with each other. Yeah. Uh, they first reminded me of like a Harajuku style look, but then I was, the more they were dancing, I'm like, man, this is like Tim Burton. Yeah. You know, Johnny Depp should be here. Yeah. It was a really good one. I think one of the things, too, that I want to see, because I remember when they were doing their introduction, they were like, we do clogging, but we incorporate different dance styles and different mm -hmm. types of music. So I'm really excited to see what they have to offer because I think they're going to be really diverse. Yeah, they will. I think so, too. And even with some of the dancers, obviously, they weren't as into their whole or their overall presentation. But even from the get-go, they had the costumes. They had everything was just perfect, in my opinion. Like, I really enjoyed that Was one. that your favorite dance as well? I think so. Really? I th oh, yeah, I think so. Okay. I think so. That's cool. That's cool. I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, they were. I mean, you know, they're young. Their they their age range was from twelve to eighteen. Yeah. So they were strong. They but had a lot of stamina. You know what I always wondered though on on this show when you have such a young act, if you send them to Vegas, like, can they handle that? Can they handle the pressure? Well, I mean, I'm I'm sure that you know it's something that they've all been dreaming about and waiting for. So if they've got tons of people behind them. It's not just them going. It's um, their coaches, their family members. And with that kind of love and support, you can pretty much go anywhere, I think. Yeah. So That's true. I think they're, they're going to do good as well. Who do we have next? Oh, we briefly saw the all-wheel sport. What was that? It was weird. It was really short, but it was good. And they said yes. And I, I don't think I got enough for me to feel like yes. I definitely didn't feel like yes. And I remember we both said this. It was so much going yeah, on. Yeah, there was too much going on. I don't know if it was the editing. It was probably the editing just because they were trying to shorten it. But even still, no, it was still a lot going on. Like you had... Well, you got like cheerleaders yeah, on the top. Bicycles and Bicycles going up and down. Like yeah. I, was, I don't... I just... It was too much for me, personally. Yeah. It's something that I could have seen on Venice Beach. Yeah, Venice well, Beach. Well, not as good. <laughs> Definitely mean, not as good. Venice Beach is not as good, <laughs> but I don't know. It was too quick for me. And what about Elizabeth and her aerial silks? Oh, she was cute. How old was she? Oh, she, she was like seven. Seven, I think, yeah. Yeah, seven years old. Okay, so let me... I have a story to tell you guys. Okay. I took 
um, an aerial class on Valentine's Day. My boyfriend took me to an aerial class because he wanted me to try something different. And he thought, well, I kind of want her to learn how to pole dance, but I don't want to be an asshole and make her <laughs> take her to a pole dancing class. So let's do the aerial thing. It's a good medium. And let me tell you, aerial class is hard. I mean, you have to have a lot of strength. You'd be surprised. So this little girl has a lot of strength and a lot of courage because that stuff is scary. Yeah. yeah. So I was really, really impressed. Well, you could even tell by the judges' faces when she was falling. They thought she was actually going to fall. But, I mean, clearly she's yeah. been doing this for a while. I mean, I, I when I was in that class, you know, the more advanced people were falling. I was like, oh, my goodness. this some Someone's going to break an arm or right. a leg or a body part or something. But it was, you know, like they're so used to it. Yeah. And she was so cute. She was really cute. She, so, I mean, I, I don't know, like, how far she'll go just yet because I don't know how, how good she is. Cause it was so quick that you didn't really get to see all kinds of tricks and stuff. Well, let me ask you this because I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever really seen that much um, as far as that type of craft goes. But when you do that, is it possible to have more than one and, like, swing from one and then do tricks and swing back to the other? Or... or is that really really difficult to do? I mean, when I when I saw the when I took that class, you know, it had a, advanced members in it, but I didn't really see that kind of thing going on. Cuz that would be pretty awesome. I if think she that's could... like Cirque du Soleil level. <laughs> 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 so, I think that girl has a little more years yeah. that she's going to need to mature. I definitely think she will get she'll get pretty far maybe. Yeah. I mean, she's cute. But there's a lot of good acts, too. There and, was a lot of good acts. And this acts. is only the first two cities, so yeah, I don't know. One of the acts that I completely disagree with was Chris, the rapping freestyle. Oh, yeah, you are not happy about that and one. And I have on my notes, fell. that was horrible. Okay, this is, go. That's, that, <laughs> what else did you write about that? That's all I wrote because that's just saying <laughs> all on fell. That was horrible because a, a true freestyle, okay, yes, he... I don't, first of all, I don't even mm -hmm. know if he truly freestyled because everything he said sounds like something that he could have prepared ahead of time. Yeah, I, I thought it was versed pra yeah, practice. Yeah, it definitely seemed practice. And it wasn't that great, in my opinion. I'm by no means a rapper. Yeah. And any, the only rap I did was like in eighth grade. And I was like, my name is Emil and I can feel what you're okay. feeling inside. But it was really, really bad. Um, but I'm no rapper. <laughs> that was pretty good. But that, <laughs> that was... I. <laughs> I don't know. And the, I think the reason why I'm so upset is because they let him through. They said yes. I, okay. I, I mean, I've been to a couple of freestyle shows, and I've seen really good freestyle freestyles. I have a friend who's amazing at freestyling. Yeah. This guy is nowhere near as good as my friend. Uh, he, however, did impress me because he didn't look the part. Yeah. You didn't think he could at least put any rhymes together. So for that... Awesome. I mean, he had the kind of shock value, which is I think. one of the things that I really love about this show. Just like last season, we were all surprised when I um, can't remember his name, but he won and he came out there and he works at a car wash and he definitely didn't look like he could sing Frank Sinatra. And then when he started singing, he had this beautiful, amazing voice. Right. So that's one of the things that really draws people to this show, too, is the shock value. So we have the shock value from the contestants and then we have the shock value that they're expecting from Howard Stern. So now it's like a big shock value. Mm -hmm. So, Well, speaking of shock value, I just want to mention, remember ja Jackie Evanko? Yes. I mean, she was amazing. And, yes. and now I see her on Dancing with the Stars, singing for them. And that's amazing. And speaking <laughs> of Dancing with the Stars, we've got uh, Team Enough. Yes. Uh, they did very good tonight. So please log on to AfterBuzz TV and check out their new video. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's, is it on... Is it on um, After Buzz, Ronnie? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we just put together a video where all the After Buzz hosts, this was a little bit before your guys' time here, uh, just represented Team Enough. Team Enough is the hashtag uh, that is through ABC's Dancing with the Stars website. So it's a bunch of us just kind of saying why we are voting for Team Enough. But yeah, she had another great score, so we won all the votes. And it's a fun video to put virally. So I know the chatters are watching right now. Yeah. So get the little link from the YouTube page, youtube.com slash TV. Uh, grab that little link and retweet it to 15 of your friends. If you only have three friends, just retweet it to those three. That's okay. Maybe you'll make a fourth one, you know? Yeah. I mean, team enough, baby. Team, team enough. enough. <laughs> right. I mean, let's see her get to the finals. That would be awesome. Yes. That would seriously be awesome. Yeah. Um. So, oh, God. This next group, it was Jorge and Alexa. And that was the father and the oh, daughter. Oh, dear. She was so cute. And the she thing... Was... I was telling you too because when I was watching, I didn't mention this. When I was watching, I was like, 
they really looked familiar. And I knew there was a, a father daughter duo on YouTube, but mm -hmm. I didn't think that was them. And then we found out later on that they were the YouTube sensation. And yes, it was cute. It was a nice performance. Mm -hmm. She could hold a note, but it wasn't an astonishing act for me to go to the finals. I and let alone to Vegas. Right. I I mean I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, you know, and I'm by no means an America's Got Talent judge. But I'm very surprised that Howard Stern didn't put his foot down for yeah. that because she is not, you know, particularly talented at her age right now. She's cute, she's bubbly and, you know, I think a lot of people could enjoy watching her, but how far and how long will that act last? I After a while, it'll get old. Even more than her act, though, like her singing, I more enjoyed her responses to what the judges were saying yeah. because she's so quick and witty. And I, was I like, mean, oh. she might better off be like, you know, on Bill Cosby's show that what kids say the darnest things yeah. or something. That that's the kind of act I see her yeah. on. You know, she's more of a comedian. She's a cute singer. If you want to invite her to a family function, but. She didn't have that wow factor, nor did she have that shock value. And I was telling you, too, um, one of the things I think is we have to think about, though, in their minds, I'm sure the producers are saying you have to realize certain people are going to increase the ratings. And because, I, what did she say? They had like 600 and something million yeah. views. Yeah, they had quite a bit. And even I recognize them. So it's like, oh, I remember them. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to be like, oh, did you see so-and-so on American Got Talent totally last night? I totally agree. Yes, yeah. YouTube sensations and, and being infused in TV shows, like, People with large Twitter followings, yeah. of mm -hmm. course, that is the way of the future. Uh, we do an after show here for America's Next Top Model, and Ken Mock, the creator of the entire series, he was saying that they're going to go into their 19th season, which is already like, whoa, who's going to continue? You know, after 19, 18 seasons, what can you do new? Uh, they're infusing so much social media into it that not only the fans will have the interaction with the contestants, but also it, it gives a resurgence of these you know, hopefuls mm -hmm. that they know that once they go on this show, they're going to walk away with like this large Twitter following and, you know, just a large online presence. And you could do a lot with that these days. So oh, yeah. I think America's next top, uh, got talent. Sorry, American <laughs> Idol. There's so many America shows. Uh, they got it. They got it on point with that one. Well, you know, I think Justin Bieber was a YouTube sensation, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. He was. Look at him now. I wish I was a YouTube sensation. You can You be. are well on your way after bus <laughs> style. Yes. Well, you know, speaking of YouTube, I want to talk about that in iTunes because this is the first America's Got Talent after show. We do a lot of after shows here at After Buzz. But what I want you guys who are listening and watching, I want you to go to iTunes, rate, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend. And, you know, what that's going to do is it's going to increase the viewership and the listening to iTunes and to our show and help people to know about After Buzz. And mm -hmm. the more people that know about After Buzz, the longer we'll be around because I'm sure we'll get more advertisers and sponsors. And we would love to be around. Seriously, once people see how great we are here, we're just super fans of these shows and we just love talking about it. So help support us. Same with YouTube. Rate, comment, subscribe. And, you know, we actually read the comments and we respond. So if you write something, we're going to talk about it. So go ahead and support us. And, um, yeah, so I just want to talk about that right quick. And do tell a friend. Yeah, iTunes and YouTube. So let's go to St. Louis. Oh, we're in St. Louis already, right? Yeah, okay. which I kind of enjoyed more than L.A. Yeah, I mean, but that was also the first time America's Got Talent went to St. Louis. Yeah. And I didn't know that until they mentioned that at, at the, the end, end of the season. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, Because there was a lot of good acts. And I, Oh, that's what I have to mention, too, mm -hmm. is what I liked about which I don't think I, this is the first time in all the season I watch America's Got Talent where I actually know this, but I kept mentioning throughout the show the music choices that they used for the background music. It was really good yeah. because it pushed the story. Like when they got to St. Louis, they played Nelly, obviously, because he's from St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And just the songs they were using, they were all current songs. And it kind of gets you excited because you're like, oh, I like that song. Yeah, and you're I like watching that song, it. It makes song. you kind of start dancing right. and stuff. And it helped move the show along, even though it's two hours. It wasn't like a dry two hours. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Like it I enjoyed it. It was dry. Yeah, it was fun. So. The first person we saw was oh. Ben Black shooting crossbows. Okay, you and I can agree. Sure, it's dangerous. Sure, it's risque. But how far, again, how far can you go with crossbows? Right. Eventually, what's he going to do? Put fire on the crossbows and throw them at this f new friend? I want to see him shoot fire with the crossbow, and I want her to be drenched in gasoline, and then that would be an interesting act. Uh, I don't even know if I'd want to watch that. 
<laughs> she burns to death. She burns to death. That would be awful. And you know, one thing that was funny that Howard Stern said at that snippet, he said, God punished me with this face and you got my face. Yeah. Because he was a very handsome man. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Well, they were really, all of them really funny because then um, Howie made a joke because he was saying, how long has your friend in the background, your little helper, been helping you? He's like, oh, she just started this week. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's a new friend. Yeah, so what happened right? to the other one? <laughs> like, that's so funny. So yeah, I I don't know. I mean, how do you feel about these like danger acts? Like whether it's knife throwing, crossbows. Uh... I think the thing for me is if I was sitting in the audience. Uh, okay, first of all, I know I'm in LA, but I haven't been to Vegas yet. I still want to go. You have never been. I've to I've never Vegas. been to Vegas. I just moved here in June, though. Okay, so where'd I, you move from? Atlanta. Nice, yeah. nice. Well, congr- So it's gonna be your year. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh wow, it is gonna be a year. <laughs> so much has happened. Um, do, do you like it? I do. I do like it. Okay, that's good. It's different. Definitely different and than you, the South. Well, you need to go to Vegas because it's your backyard now. Yeah, seriously. And He, li- uh, he lives that L.A. complex lifestyle. I do live oh, the L.A. complex that's lifestyle. That's just another plug. Do you now? <laughs> I really do. I really do. <laughs> so check him out after Buzz TV, <laughs> L.A. complex lifestyle. <laughs> seriously. But, um, but yeah, so I've never been to Vegas, but obviously we've all heard about the Vegas shows. And when I'm imagining seeing some of these acts, I think, you know, how long would I sit through this? Would it be entertaining? Would I want to walk out? And for sure, that, that's fair. for the crossbow, I was thinking, you know, I probably would give it about six or seven minutes and mm-hmm. then I want to leave. And I definitely wouldn't pay to see that. Uh, yeah. I mean, he, he could be an opening act, maybe. But... He could definitely be an opening act. But with the danger acts in general... <laughs> How much do we really want to see? Well, that's that's the problem with these danger acts. There can't just be a, the element of danger, and that's sufficient. There has to be more. There has to be, like, a comedy side to it, or there has to be, like, a, a, an acting performance, something that kind of, like, makes us want to see more, and they kind of instill the danger side in yeah. it. That's, well, that's, you know. So I don't know how far this guy's going to go with the crossbow thing. I think he pretty much showed all his tricks. Tonight. Well, he said when they asked him next, I remember uh, Sharon said, you know, what are you going to do next if mm-hmm. we put you through? And he said, sure, she had the same concerns. Yeah, what did he say? I'm going to do like backflips or something. And do, but <laughs> that's still not, it's not entertaining to me. He's going to do backflips and then pick up his bow and do it. Yeah, or so. Oh, I mean, I hope he proves me wrong because I'm, I'm being a little skeptical about this act here. Um, I mean, he can put on the Reno 911 stripper costume like the other dude. Oh, no, that was awful. <laughs> That was quite awful. This, this guy was good looking, so it was a little different. Well, let's talk about the next group who we both liked. Um, Nick Cannon said, we're going to kill all the lights. Yes. And we had Light Wire Theater come out. Well, anytime you talk about killing the lights, it's off to a good start. Yes. You know? Uh, so what do you think of that? I mean, it was pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. It was different. I don't think I've seen anything like that before. I mean, there's been some acts, I think, on the show before that have done some type of electronic type style like mm-hmm. but for whatever reason that was so innovative because it I felt like I wasn't watching I knew it was people obviously in the costumes and stuff but I didn't really feel like it was people I felt like I was actually watching performance which mm-hmm. is important obviously because you want to be captivated by a performance so um for me I just really enjoyed that I mean for me it was one of the other acts the first one being the strings the yeah. guy with the long strings. This is another act that I felt like, man, I really wish I was in the audience right now so yeah. I could watch this yeah. live. Because the flowers and the dinosaurs, I was like, how are they doing this? They must be flexible and they must be cool because they had really cool music on. You turn on the lights and they are not what you expect them to look like. Completely didn't expect that. Yeah. But they were so good. And I also think that this one can go pretty yeah, far. Yeah, they can definitely go pretty far. You know, they what what was their day, day job? Do we remember here? I don't remember what their day job was. Oh, well, they're, they're a light wire theater dance company. Oh, so they just do that then? Yeah, that's all they do. You know, and they're just well, it really shows. into... Well, it shows that they, <laughs> they're really good. They're really into electronics and electro. Well, I think it's important to say how we said, too, that they topped everything done in the past. Yeah. And uh, from everything we saw up to that point, I I would almost agree to that. Yeah. You know, because it was very different, very different in always. I mean, flowers and dinosaurs. Yeah. Black lights, neon, and then these people that you do not expect to be dancers were doing all that. Yeah. So I I, I really want to see more of this, hopefully live. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, that, that was good. I'm glad that they got a yes. The next one, though, was disgusting. 
and he made uh. it through. I have WTF on my notes. <laughs> <laughs> he put the largest species of venomous scorpion in his mouth. And he made it through. He did, but... I was shocked. Again, another danger moment that how far can you go with it? Like, what's he going to do? Like, get suffocated by a snake and be like, oh, that's amazing. And then when Sharon, I think Sharon asked him a question, and I don't remember what she asked him, and then he responded with the with a scorpion in his mouth. Oh, yeah. It was not cute. No. People were laughing. I was like, this is not funny. This guy needs to get off the stage. And then it was a yes. Well, that's the thing. I feel like, especially in St. Louis, it seemed like they said way more yeses than they should have. Mm-hmm. As opposed to L.A. where it's like, no, 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 yeah. no, no. Right. And maybe it's because L.A. is supposed to be, you know, where all the talent is, where it's not. But <laughs> I mean, you know, I think maybe L.A. is the mecca of yeah. where people come to provide their talent. So people have to more or less fake it till you make it, quote right. unquote. But in St. Louis, people have a, a different kind of heart. You know, it's, it's, it's good heart anywhere you go. But yeah. It's very different. Yeah. Well, the next one, what was it? Irving the dog. I thought that was cute. <laughs> that was cute. I mean, I love dogs and I... I think anything with a dog should at least make it to Vegas. <laughs> I think I think it was cool too, though, because even though it was like a ventriloquist performance, it was a real dog, and he had some type of attachment to the bottom of his mouth. Yeah. But it didn't look fake. No, it, it didn't. actually looked pretty. It was legit. Cute. Yeah, it was, it cute. was cute. I mean, you know, season two winner uh, T- Terry Fader. I, I forget so. his name, but he's on. He's in Vegas right now, and. I remember watching season two, and I didn't think that a ventriloquist would go that far. But yeah. He went very, very far. Yeah. So. Well, um, next we have the world famous Stick and Move dance crew. I had pretty cool, awesome, but I mean, they weren't. Do you mm-hmm. remember? It was the ones where uh, they were doing like the. It was the two black guys, and they were doing like the flips mm-hmm. and stuff, like intertwined with each other. Yeah. I mean, all, all I wrote down was world famous Stick and Move dance crew. Yes. <laughs> So I, I think that could mean that nothing shock value again. It was good. It definitely wasn't the best dance crew by I mean, any means. And they danced way better than I would. Yeah. But, but mm. I don't so. know how far they're going to get. And then we had the weird circus sideshow performers, Sanjul Vamana, Red Rum, and Pinkerton. Oh, God, that was so disgusting. He had a little baby. I felt sorry for the kid. I mean, when they were showing him in the pre uh, in the pre show before he got on stage and he had these three long needles, I already knew I wasn't going to like it. I I have a fear for needles. I couldn't. But I mean, you saw I couldn't. I literally could not look at the screen. I, I did not know what he was going to do with those needles, but I knew it wasn't going to be something comforting I think or cool. The main thing for me, though, was I really felt bad for the son, which is why I kind of hope that as the son grows up, he kind of gets addicted to video games. Oh, yeah. Well, video games are awesome. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> right. But I know Gamefly is awesome. So, Ronnie, why don't you mm-hmm. tell us about Gamefly? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, well, if you don't even know what Gamefly is, let me rope you into that. Uh, It is like the Netflix for the video game world. Um, Everyone knows about Gamefly, but it's kind of like the place you want to go. And I wanted to let you know about our 15-day free trial. uh, Going over to Gamefly.com slash AfterBuzzTV. You're doing that. It's basically the hub of everything because you got 8,000 games over there for your PlayStation, Xbox, Wii's, all kinds of different consoles or whatever. So if you want to get a hookup, it's definitely something to do through us, through AfterBuzz. So again, regular website, Gamefly.com slash TV, and then everyone's kind of like a win-win. It's a nice little gesture that we're doing for our video game fans because at the end of the day, like a lot of podcast fans are also video game fans. I know uh, Kaori also, you know, you you love video games. I love video games. I'm a Skyrim addict. I know I should be over it now, but I'm not. (laughs) You don't have to be over it. You can Uh, always, you know, represent. (laughs) I represent, of course. So go to Gamefly and play with me. Nice. Video um, games. <laughs> I wish I was in the. I don't. I've never really been into games. I play like Fable. Is that a big? Well, I I got into video games because I had an older brother that I really looked up to, and I just did not. I'm the type of person that hates being left out. So whatever he did, I didn't. He happened to be a nerd, and I decided to follow suit. So. What about The Sims? I played The Sims. The Sims is cool, you know. I feel like I don't have any street kit with the gamers. Oh, but you can do something. You can dance. <laughs> 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 All right, so we have... Thank you, Ronnie, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we have, after that, I have the Eye of the Tiger Boys. Those dudes um, that were playing a little... What is that instrument they were playing? I, I think it was the kazoo. Yes, the kazoo. And it was weird. It, they weren't even in sync. 
Well, that's the thing. It was it was like I thought they might be good because the way they started off was oh Howard Stern was like oh that's my son or something because yeah, I guess I looked like him as yeah. a kid, and then they ended up being very bad. Uh, <laughs> for me though, I think one of the things that bothered me is okay they were doing the little eye of the tiger thing, but. The kazoo isn't even a fun instrument. Like, it's not a pleasant instrument to listen to. So how far did they think they're going to go? I mean, isn't the kazoo something that you can get out of a cereal box? Yes. <laughs> you can get that like, the dollar store. <laughs> but, but who let them through to the three judges? I want to know. It's all about what they think America is going to enjoy. Well, America it. didn't like it. <laughs> America gives us a big X. <laughs> They should have a button for America. Seriously. Like a mega button where all the audience members run in the middle Can and Can we get a red in. button here? Red button. We just need a red button right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be fun, actually. That, that, that would be fun. But I would definitely give a red button to the Storm and Norman guy with the artificial pumpkin. Oh, what was that? I, I still I, don't know. I was like, why is Nick Cannon making a uh, jack-o'-lantern oh, okay, well, on America's Got Talent? You know what? When people come on and do things like that, it makes me want to go on the show and just see what stupidity they'll let through. Yeah. Because honestly, I still don't know what he was doing. He like he put it in there, and then he put like cups in there, and then put a light in. They were like, what are you doing? I, I mean, I've tried to make jack-o'-lanterns, and I'm not good at it. I need to get those stencils and things, and I'm still not good at it. So I guess in that respect, it's a talent. Yeah. But by no means is it an America's Got Talent version. Definitely not. No. Um, I'm glad they said no to that because there's some pl things that they said yes to. We have just four more acts after that. So we had the random dancing dude who danced with Nick Cannon. But he was dancing to <laughs> Nick Cannon's. He was dancing to Nick Cannon's song, and then Nick Cannon comes on stage and performs a song with him. Yeah, that was, and then it became Nick Cannon's show. Which it was a great show. It was a great show. And did he get a no? I mean, I, yeah, I wasn't he, quite sure well, what happened there. They said no, and then he's like, let me try again, let me try again, Nick Cannon I'm pretty out. sure he got a no. I mean, it was a Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon gets a yes, he got a no. By the way, I just need to say, Nick Cannon has become a man. Seriously. On America's Talent. He used Talent. to be skinny like me, and uh, now he's buff. I mean, what happened? I, Howard Stern made a comment that he needs to work out with him. Well, I mean, if you're with Mariah Carey, you have to make sure you look okay. I know, and I'm, I'm just thinking, man, I want to know where you work out <laughs> to find guys that look like you. You know, like, that was pretty hot right there. Nick Cannon is not the same as he was on Nickelodeon. No, no, and he's not, he's... I'm a gigolo. Remember that song? <laughs> that was a great song. And now he can really be a gigolo if he yeah. wanted to. <laughs> it's so funny, though. Now that he's a father, he looks better than ever. Better than ever. And he's got two really cute kids, yeah. by the way. Very Are they cute. twins? They were twins, right? They're twins. Yeah. yeah. Mor Morocco. And Monroe. And Monroe. Yeah. Those are unique names. They are. I love those names. I think they're really good names. Mm. It fits them. Yeah. I think Nick Cannon and Mariah Carey, I'm... I'm so pro that couple because yeah. they're just so cute and helpful towards each other. But um, yeah, so back to that uh, dancing thing. I was not impressed by that guy. And then Nick good. Cannon came and helped him out. And everyone was clapping, clapping. But they were clapping for no one else but Nick Cannon. But one of the things was, even if you, in the background, though, he wasn't doing that terrible of a job. But it definitely wasn't Vegas material. Yeah, it was, it was kind of a pity. Yeah. Yay, you're doing better than you did the last round. Right. I <laughs> wasn't that impressed. Well, let's take a quick commercial break, and sure. then we'll discuss the last three acts, which though they were all pretty emotional. Yeah, the last three acts were all emotional, and then we'll briefly talk about what we think about Howard Stern's oh, love him. performance. But let's do that, so, yeah. Yeah, let's take a quick commercial. Okay. <laughs> hey, everybody, John Comerford here. I've got my Mad Men with me. Kevin Undergaro. Phil Svitak. For all you fans of Mad Men, we're your After Buzz TV hosts of Mad Men. Every Sunday, right after the show, 9.30, we're breaking down the episode. You can also check us out on iTunes and YouTube the following morning. We're going to get into the imagery, the symbolism, the structure. We give you all the information on Mad Men that the other podcasts out there don't. Very insightful. You're going to love it. Check us out. Please. Hello, everybody. We are the LA Complex crew, and we are here with Andre Fuller from the LA Complex, who plays Caldrick King. And you can catch LA Complex every Tuesday night on the CW at 9 o'clock. After that, Come to our After Buzz TV show where we do a recap of the LA Complex. We talk about Raquel, we talk about sex tapes, we talk about, you know, relationships. And you can catch us live at 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, AfterBuzzTV.com. 
If you can't catch us live, go ahead and swing over to YouTube the next day. You can rate, you can comment, watch us, iTunes, same thing, download, rate, comment, and we would love to hear your feedback, and we love to support guys, so please, please, please support us and support the LA Complex. Buzz you later. Hey guys, this is the After Buzz TV crew for The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Woo! Don't forget to tune in every Monday night at 8 p.m. to see Adrian Vero, Deanna Vaughn, Susan Hahn, Giselle Ugardi. Buzz you later. After Buzz TV, what do you want to buzz about? All right, guys, we are back. Your AGT crew here. Um, so the next act was the loyalty dance team. <laughs> what do you think? It's uh, another dance team that they were really good. Um, but I think more than anything, it was that heart that set them through. Yeah. Very emotional, a lot of tears. And America likes to see that. You know, we love to see people with feelings and they did feel like a family you know you really wanted them to move forward regardless of you know that they did have talent of course but what pushed them to like further than other talented dancers was that they were a family and i really like that you know i think it's really important when you have a craft that you're really invested in mm-hmm. if you can find other people who are truly invested mm-hmm. in it too absolutely then it really feels like a family just like the after buzz family that i have here oh um but next we have Simply Sergio, who wants to be a recording artist, and he said his wife is number one fan. And <laughs> okay, I think his strategy, if he if he did this on purpose, I think his strategy was really unique because what he did was he sang horribly, and then he asked them for another shot to sing again. And Howie was the one who kind of said, you know, let's give him a shot. And he blew us away with God Bless America. I really was not expecting that. Yeah. It wasn't it was Howard, right? That Well Howie Howie's the one who didn't say no. Yeah. And then Howard was like, Okay, yeah, let's let you do let's, it again. But yeah. do you think it was smart to take that risk? Because what if they didn't let him sing again? I I mean, that's the thing, it was a risk. Right? Or did the producers know? I mean, pfft. That was that. I mean, that came out of left field for me. Yeah. He comes out and underneath it says waiter forty seven, simply Sergio. He comes out cocky, so you're like, all right, all right. If you come out cocky, you already have to step up. You well, know let's what I talk mean? about his name first of all. Simply Sergio. Hello, simply. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty funny. I mean, his name was what Sergio Ojeda, but his artistic name is Sergio. Yeah. I was like, all right, well, that's cool. Yeah. So now that you're being a little cocky, but he he was kind of sweet too, but. You're being a little cocky. You got to be really, really good. Yeah. And he kind of sucked with that girl from Ibanema with the ooh. And then his face was ugly when he sang. Oh, he had a horrible God. singing face. He was so strange. And how he made fun of it. <laughs> yeah. But then he wowed everybody. Yeah. With that fantastic voice when yeah. he was singing "God Bless America." I mean, I think he. I guess he may get pretty far. It depends because even though it was what I said too was in my notes, it was a good performance, but. Was it good because we heard yeah. it after his horrible performance? I think I think it, I, I guess America's gonna have to wait and see for that because I think right now he has that shock value. Yeah, that which is we were talking pretty about. important on this show. Mm-hmm. And then finally, the last performers were street performers: Shanice and Maurice, a sixty-two-year-old yes. father and an eighteen-year-old daughter, mm-hmm. and their relationship was precious. Like yeah. they were really close. I'm a huge uh, daddy's girl. And so seeing that really touched a place in me. And they're both really talented. And as the judges were saying, you know, Maurice really helped Shanice shine. And her voice, it, I, I, I think we could tell just from the dynamic they had that they were pretty good. But when she actually sang, she sang. And she has a voice that doesn't seem like it fits her body. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's very, uh, you know, she's 18, but she sings like a woman. A woman, yes. Mm-hmm. Like, it was so powerful. And even though she was nervous, she still has a stage presence about her that captivates you, too. And she was nervous, but she was fresh-faced, and she seemed like... I'm just waiting to see how she evolves over time. Right. Because, like you said, if we got them in tuxedo and a dress and just see how they can perform on stage together and the dynamic they have, mm-hmm. I think that would be a great Vegas performance. I think so, too. I, I really want to see, like, uh, maybe a grand piano next to them uh, yeah. and just be lovely. So that was great. St. Louis was awesome. L.A. was awesome. Yeah. Well, let's talk about quickly Howard Stern. What do we think? Uh, I think we kind of brushed the surface 
um, earlier on. He is great. I think he has just made the show much better already. I mean, he is so awesome. He went from controversial and he fits perfectly on America's Got Talent. Right. I'm just excited to see more of him. His personality is completely appropriate for this show and is not what people are expecting. There's no negative energy. He's family friendly. Yes, he's a little harsh sometimes, but it's a harsh you want to see. Mm -hmm. I want to see it. I want to see more and I'm excited to see more next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mentioned that he also goes on the stage and dances with people. Right. He's more interactive. Seriously. Yeah. So, but guys, that's going to do it for us. You can catch us next week where we'll recap um, tomorrow's episode and next week's episode. But you can follow me on Twitter at Emilio E. Jr. That's E M I L I O E J R. And you can follow me at K A O R I O U S. All right, guys. See you next week. See ya. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.